Let's talk everything multiplayer in Disney Dreamlight Valley. Multiplayer is a feature that just launched on December 5th with the full release of Disney Dreamlight Valley. Currently, it supports up to three players joining you in your valley. In this video, we'll go over everything about multiplayer. We'll start with the unlock conditions. How far along do you need to be in the game? What do you need to do to unlock multiplayer? Then the practical, how do you actually get people to come to your valley? Who can play with who? And then what visitors can do in multiplayer mode and some things to think about. And then we'll look at some fun ideas for things you can do if you do have people join you in your valley. If you're at the very start of the game, you can actually unlock multiplayer in Disney Dreamlight Valley on day one. However, you will need to do several quests in order to get there. So in order to unlock multiplayer, you will need Vanellope as a resident in your valley. Before I got the quest to move Vanellope to my valley, I had done a number of other quests. Some of these I know for sure you need, some of them I'm less sure about. So you definitely need to do the royal tools and the dream castle. I had also done Mickey's memories and foodception and Goofy's fishing expedition. You will need to do Scrooge McDuck's making sense of things and making sure that Scrooge's store is open. So you'll need to do Scrooge McDuck's grand reopening and then and after you complete the dream castle quest and you open your first realm, you do not actually have to go to your first realm. If you go back to Scrooge, he will have the Haunting of Dreamlight Valley quest. This is the quest line that will get you Vanellope in your valley. If you need help with that quest line, I have a video specifically about unlocking Vanellope. So I'll link that one in the description in case you need help with that. Once Vanellope is in your valley as a resident, you have her house there. You need to make sure that you have completed Dreamlight Valley Economy 101 with Scrooge and Customer Knows Best where you deliver furniture to Merlin. Once you complete that quest, you will have a quest option for Valley Visits with Vanellope. So if you already had Vanellope and you were caught up on all of your quests before multiplayer was added, all you need to do to start this is to go talk to Vanellope and look for that Valley Visits quest. If you want to see a real-time walkthrough from the very start of the game, how you get to multiplayer and how multiplayer works, check out my first look at the Apple Arcade version where we started a brand new save and made it all the way through testing multiplayer on day one. So let's look at how the Valley Visits quest unlocks multiplayer in Disney Dreamlight Valley. When you do talk to her, she'll tell you that she's been rummaging around in Scrooge's stuff and she found this curious item. She hands you this colorful tube, giant furniture item. You won't see the item in your pockets, this goes directly to your inventory for your furniture. You get it from her, place the item anywhere outside in your valley, and when you walk up to and interact with the machine, you'll have to agree that you do in fact want multiplayer turned on. That'll be a one-time thing. Then you can interact with the machine and ask it to open your valley to valley visit. When you do, it'll give you a code. Your friends will have to enter that code. In order to visit your valley, your friends will need that code from you and they'll have to go to the title screen so not in gameplay mode but in that title screen there'll be an option for them there where they can enter the code and then join you in your valley if you're playing on a console that has a subscription for online play you will need to be subscribed in order for multiplayer to work so if you're playing on the switch that means you're gonna need nintendo switch online in order to play in multiplayer when visitors arrive at your valley they will show up near your colorful tube so make sure that's in a location where you want it to be since you won't be able to move it once they're there. You do have a limit of inviting three friends at a time to your valley. I have tested this on the Nintendo Switch with another Nintendo Switch player and then also on the Nintendo Switch with Apple Arcade and the way that players show up across the different platforms is a little bit different, but I think it's important to keep in mind when we were playing with two Nintendo Switch accounts, the player's Nintendo Switch name was displayed on the screen. So whatever your Nintendo Switch account name is, regardless of what your in-game name is, that name would be shown to everyone else in the valley. So keep that in mind. At least on the Switch, you can change that name whenever you want. Now, when we were playing on the Nintendo Switch and with an Apple Arcade account, on the Nintendo Switch, instead of showing any player name, all it did was have a little bubble above the host's head 
is said host, and above the player is said player 1. So I would suppose whoever comes next to the valley would be labeled player 2 if they are cross-platform. Now I don't know for sure, but I imagine the way this works is if players are on the same platform, it may show your player ID or your gamer tag, regardless of what your in-game name may be. So like it does with the Nintendo Switch account showing that name, I imagine if you had two Apple Arcade accounts, it's probably going to show your Game Center ID. If you were playing on Steam, I would not be surprised if it showed your Steam name. So keep that in mind when you're playing. If any of those might reveal your real name and you don't want that to happen, you may want to see if you can change it or test it with somebody that you know before accidentally revealing information to other people. So a big question we have is, is there crossplay? Can players on different platforms play together? And which ones? And the answer is yes, there is crossplay. The only exception is for PlayStation. Just like it was for Dream Snaps, PlayStation can only play with other PlayStation players and all the other platforms, including Apple Arcade, can play together. The system is functioning normally. Now, right now at the launch of multiplayer, Xbox and the Microsoft Store are having an issue with crossplay, so Xbox can still multiplayer. However, they can only multiplayer with other Xbox users. But once they fix that, they should be able to do multiplayer with everyone else. In multiplayer mode, you'll notice that the menus have changed for you. You are unable to progress in any of the online events like Dream Snaps, the Star Path, and your quest menu is completely gone because you cannot make any progress on quests with your friends there. You also cannot use any of your tools and currently we do not have any emotes. This means you can't take pictures using the in-game camera either and the fast travel points have also been disabled. You won't be able to talk to any villagers or go in any villager houses. Visitors will not be able to go into any buildings unless the host enters first. When a host enters a building, the visitors will be teleported in inside that building with them automatically. The only buildings you can currently enter are going to be Scrooge's shop and any of the player houses. That includes your main house as well as your secondary houses. When the host goes to enter Scrooge's store, they'll be shown a prompt saying, do you want to bring all of your visitors into the store with you? They will be able to shop. So if you do not want your visitors to be able to shop your Scrooge's store, do not go into the store while you have visitors. However, if you want them to be able to shop, you must enter the store first and it will magically transport all of your visitors into the store with you. They will be able to shop anything that's still there, just like they could in their shop. However, no one is going to be able to order from Scrooge because no one, not even the host, is able to talk directly to the villagers. We don't know currently what happens if a visitor were to buy a clothing item from your store, because we know that the clothing does not respawn after you buy it out of your own store, but I don't know for certain if the game is taking its cues from what's been bought from that store or what appears in the player's inventory. So it may be possible that a visitor buys a piece of clothing from your store and that piece of clothing never shows up again, or it could be that the store reads the player's inventory and because the player is not the one who bought it, maybe it does come back, but I might be kind of careful and maybe don't buy clothing from other people's stores just in case it messes it up for them. Furniture does come back around so that side of the store should be okay. And then similar to entering, if you want people out of the shop, the host must exit the shop. The buying process does look the same for visitors, but from the host perspective, they don't actually see Scrooge walk over to the visitor when they're buying an item. Items once bought by a visitor do disappear. Just like in your own shop, only one player is going to be able to buy each item. They don't respawn for the host if a visitor buys them. If you enter your own house, visitors will also be teleported inside with you. However, once inside the house, visitors can go wherever they want. They're able to use the elevator. They're able to go into other rooms. The host can go onto other floors or into other rooms and the visitors will not be teleported with them. However, if the host leaves the house, if the host leaves the store, the visitors will be teleported 
teleported out of the building as well. Do keep in mind that visitors will be able to pick up all dropped items in the house as well. So if you're using dropped items to decorate or to designate what's in your storage room, be aware that visitors will be able to pick up those items. This could be good if you have specific trading rooms for different people, but it could also potentially be a mess since they can run all over your house and pick things up. And a lot of times people will drop items that they really want to keep so that they don't get sucked into crafting or cooking. So keep that in mind. I think we can block off rooms with furniture so that folks can't reach them, but you would need to do that ahead of time. While in multiplayer mode, none of the players will be able to cook or craft. So things like we would do in Animal Crossing where someone would bring you all the materials and you would craft them something, you won't be able to do that. Players can interact with the furniture, so turning things on and off. However, none of the players are able to sit on any of the furniture when visiting for some reason. And we already knew multiplayer is limited to the main valley, so you cannot do multiplayer in the expansion area. Although you can change your clothes in multiplayer, notice that critter companions do not show up and follow you around in multiplayer. For the most part, the host and the visitors will all have the same permissions in the valley. So if you're trying to see if somebody could get to something or pick something up, you can turn on valley visits and then go try to pick things up yourself. We've tested quite a few things, but not quite everything. When someone is visiting your valley, they will be able to pick up most dropped items. So we dropped fish, materials, and flowers, including items from the DLC, although my visitor was also someone who had the DLC, and they were able to pick up everything. In addition to this, they were able to pick up spawned items that are similar to dropped items, so they could pick up any of the shells on the beach, any of the wood that spawned around trees, and any flowers that were growing in the valley. So it didn't matter if I had dropped these items or if they had spawned, a visitor could still pick up and take any of them. So if you have a specific setup for spawning your wood and you wouldn't want somebody to pick that up, you may want to fence it off to make sure that that stays right where you want it to. Keep this in mind also, if if you have special items that you have dropped that you don't want somebody else to pick up, you may need to fence them off somehow as well, or at least really trust anyone who's coming to your valley. Because no one can use tools while you're in their valley, no one's going to be able to go fishing, mining, digging. They cannot pick crops, but they can pick flowers. So if you've decorated with flowers, someone could potentially pick those flowers if they're not fenced off. Something that surprised me, visitors cannot access your storage while they're there, which is good, but the host can also not access storage. So you can only trade for things you can drop pretty much by dropping them and the other person picking them up. It's not a formal trading system. That's what we saw in the trailer. It's exactly what we expected. However, if you are going to trade, that means that you need to already have all of those items in your pockets or on the ground before opening your valley to valley visits because you will not be able to access your storage after you open your valley. So make sure you're doing some planning. Also make sure that you have enough room in your pockets if you're going to need to pick something up because no one's going to be able to access Goofy's stall to sell things either. You cannot access Kristoff's stall while they're there. So if you were hoping to say trade pumpkin seeds, you would need to purchase them in advance for the other person. So keep in mind that the other person will not be able to shop at Goofy's stall, but neither will the host. It seems like Visitors cannot pick up special items like the candy buckets from Halloween. However, they can probably pick up candy if you were to drop it for them. Now we tested a lot of items and visitors were able to pick up absolutely everything. There was one exception, so we did test flowers from the DLC, and when my visitor had been to the DLC area themselves, they were able to pick up the DLC flowers that I had dropped on my island. However, on my other account, it has access to the expansion pass, and I had done the Port of Many Worlds quest, but I had not actually gone to the DLC area yet, and on that account, that visitor was unable to pick up the flower. So it seems like probably in order to access DLC content, the account not only needs access to the DLC, but they need to have also gone there themselves. I was a little curious if it might be that you couldn't pick up things that you hadn't picked up before, and that's not the case. 
because my brand new account could run around to any biome and pick up anything, even if they didn't have access to the other main biomes on their island. So it looks like any account can pick up anything from the main valley, but only accounts that have actually visited the DLC area will be able to pick up DLC content. Now I haven't tested everything from the DLC, so I don't know if like bags of seeds might work differently than flowers or gemstones, but that's something to keep in mind. Once you have players in your valley, if you go back to the machine and talk to it, you'll have a few different options. You can manage players and from manage players, you can kick out individual players or you can block them entirely if you don't want them to be able to visit you in the future. You can also also get a reminder of your code so if you click through those options too quickly and you need to invite someone you can just go back to the machine and it'll tell you your code and then when you want to end multiplayer you simply close your valley now as soon as you close your valley all the players in your valley will be disconnected immediately so this is not the same thing as closing your gates in animal crossing so that nobody else can join you your valley is either open or closed and when it's open players can join and players can be in your valley when it's closed you are no longer in multiplayer mode from the post on the website we get a little bit more information about valley visits in addition to being able to pick up dropped items spawned items that spawn sort of like dropped items enter player homes and scrooge's store if the host enters them first players can change their outfits but no one can access the furniture menu now a new part of multiplayer player that we couldn't get to work are pixel shards. The website calls these crystallized clumps of online energy that you can only find during a visit to your friend's valley. You use pixel shards to craft two new special items. One is the pixelized cooking flame. They say with the pixelized cooking flame you will get double output when you're cooking for the next 5 or 12 meals depending on which version you opt for. When you craft the pixelized cooking flame, kind of like when you're crafting the potions. So this to me feels really over really complicated, difficult to do, and is definitely not the bulk cooking that we asked for, but it does double your output. I can't see ever wanting to use this unless maybe I needed like two fugu meals and I just didn't have any more fish and it wasn't raining and I couldn't get them. But to me, this is ridiculous amounts of work and most of the time I have the ingredients. So it'd have to be for something, maybe for a quest that I just couldn't get that one more ingredient that I needed. You can also use them to craft glitchy pixel duplicate packs. These are special items for crafting. Depending on the size of the pack you create, you can receive 5 or 12 glitchy pixel duplicates. These you can use in place of required ingredients like a wild card in different crafting recipes. So if you are short on a single material in a crafting recipe, you can replace that missing material with one of these glitchy pixel duplicates and you'll still be able to craft the item even though you don't have all the materials. That I think I could see being more useful because there are some materials that are just really difficult to get, especially if you're in a quest and you just need that one more thing. However, in the entire time I was playing in multiplayer, neither one of us saw a pixel shard. So I'll have to play I guess a whole bunch more to see if I find any. So these are not things that you get really easily. We went around the entire valley never seeing one of them. So I don't think that this is going to be something to rely on. I feel like where we're gonna see multiplayer be particularly useful is for more advanced accounts helping early accounts with materials maybe, or with player made games and for valley tours. I think those are the two things that I'm most interested in doing on the channel, but it could be useful if your friend gets that one item in their shop that they've had for a while and you just haven't seen yet. It does give you a chance to maybe get it from your friend's shop since your friend cannot order things for you or trade furniture, but it looks like for the most part multiplayer is exactly what we saw. They've done a pretty good job of locking things down for the most part so that people aren't coming and picking all your pumpkins and running away with them. They can't raid your storage, which is really important. I do 
feel like maybe it would be useful for the host to be able to access their storage. I think it could be fun to add a whole bunch of other things and we know they are planning additional functionality in 2024 for multiplayer. Now apart from trading materials, shopping in Scrooge's store, and doing valley tours, which I hope to do on the channel, what else can you do in multiplayer? I think there is so much potential with these features for player made games similar to Animal Crossing. I know when I first learned that multiplayer was coming it was around the time when we got gliding and I was thinking we're gonna do races, we're gonna do obstacle courses, mazes, things like that. And I think you could do things similar to the Crunchy Island races in Animal Crossing, the Lost Race scavenger hunt from Animal Crossing. However, because you can only have three people in your valley at a time, it is sort of limiting to anything that would be team based, which is unfortunate. So I was also thinking that we could do different forms of hide and seek, a variety of really simple to really complex scavenger hunts, mazes, races. I think you could easily set up board games as well, from anything as simple as checkers or tic-tac-toe to something way more complicated where you create a board game around your entire valley. Because remember, we do have Touch of Magic stuff that we can use as well. And thinking of the Touch of Magic stuff, I think we could see design challenges, which we already see people doing using photos. But now we can actually walk around those different designs. And I think we could do things like fashion shows because you can change clothes and your look while on other islands. I think there's a ton of game potential, especially with the houses, because you can contain all of your visitors in a house and either create something with the very few rooms we have in our secondary houses or create something really fun, interesting, and complex in our main houses with all the different floors and possibilities that are there. So even though these features are exactly what we expected, they are really, really simple. I think they come with a lot of creative potential for players to create interesting ways to use them, to create different games. I'm sure we're going to test out a ton of possibilities on the channel, so if you want to take part in those, or if you have a fully decorated valley that we should tour, consider also joining the Discord, checking out our multiplayer channel where you can trade with others, you can share photos of your valley, submit it for valley tours, and help us plan what we're going to do for multiplayer. So hopefully this helps helps you get some ideas for multiplayer and understand how it works in Disney Dreamlight Valley. Subscribe for more Disney Dreamlight Valley content and turn on notifications to find out the next time we go live. Hope to see you there.